Hello mga kapatid! Tara! Let's talk about SK Federation. Basically, we can say that SK is an institution at the barangay or village level. Iyon talaga ang home court kumbaga ng mga programa at gawain ng SK. But as you may have known already, SK's representation and influence goes beyond the barangay. To a large extent, may say din ang mga SK sa kanilang bayan, lungsod o probinsya. And that is essentially through the SK Federation. To expound on that, let us discuss three key things about SK Federation. First and foremost, what is the SK Federation? Section 21 of the SK Reform Act or RA 10742 mainly provides the nature of operations of the SK Federation. In simple terms, it is an organization or formation or body of SKs in a particular area of jurisdiction. Kapag sa munisipyo, ang tawag rito ay pambayang federasyon ng mga sangguniang kabataan. Kapag sa city naman, ito ay kilala bilang panlungsod na federasyon ng mga sangguniang kabataan. At kapag province level naman, panlalawigang federasyon ng mga sangguniang kabataan ang tawag rito. Yung ganitong klase ng samahan ng SKs ay hindi naman talaga ganoon kabago. There was a national SK federation prior to the passage of the SK reform law. But due to the persistent issues surrounding that national body, major changes have been introduced in terms of the federation structure, functions, and overall operations. Which leads us to the second point or question. How is the SK Federation formed and who comprises it? Much of the answer to that is also reflected in Section 21 of the SK Reform Act. There is practically an election that must happen as a formal exercise in selecting the officers of the SK Federation at any level. In the law, the election of a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer is required at the minimum. But the Department of Interior and Local Government, Commission on Elections, and National Youth Commission later on issued the Joint Memorandum Circular 2017-01 to include positions for Auditor, PRO, and Sergeant at Arms, and of course, other positions as deemed necessary to be filled during such election. This law likewise requires that the SK Federation polls be done within 15 days from the SK elections at the city and municipal level and within 30 days for the provincial level. But in the joint circular, more specific schedule is set given the transitions that affected the original schedule. And part of the executive issuance furthermore were the particular procedures and guidelines in the process of electing the officers of the SK Federation at all levels, including the formation of an election committee and a panel of observers to ensure the integrity and validity of the process and its results at every level. Ngayon, sino naman ang mga bubuo at pwedeng maihalal sa SK Federation? For the city or municipal level SK Federation, the officers are chosen among the elected SK chairpersons from the barangays within a given city or municipality. Yung mga SK chairpersons ang pipili sino sa kanila ang magiging president, vice president, and so on and so forth. For the provincial level SK Federation, meanwhile, the officers are chosen among the elected SK Federation presidents at the city and municipal level. Now, Let's proceed to the third and final discussion point. Why does SK Federation matter anyway? A direct answer to that is, after the elections, those chosen to be officers of an SK Federation have additional powers as well as responsibilities for SK and for the local government. More particularly, the SK Federation presidents automatically become ex officio members of the provincial, city, or municipality councils. Halimbawa, ang nahalal na presidente ng isang panliligang pederasyon ng mga sangguniang kabataan ay uupo rin bilang isang miyembro ng sangguniang panliligan o di kaya ay tinatawag rin natin itong board member. 
With that is the assumption of an expanded set of functions not only on behalf of the SK federations of the cities and municipalities in that province, but also for all the SKs there. Dagdag pa, at any level, the SK federation presidents also assume the chairpersonship of the youth and sports development committees in the local government councils. Outside that immediate structure within LGUs where SKs through the federations are represented, the relevance of the SK Federation also lies in its role as a convenor of the local youth development councils or LOIDC at the city, municipality, and provincial levels. To be specific, the president of a given SK Federation is mandated to lead and manage the affairs of the LYDC along with other members representing youth organizations and youth serving organizations in that jurisdiction. And chief of those matters, in fact, is the preliminary drafting of the Local Youth Development Plan or LYDP just before it is endorsed for review, discussion, and approval of the LYDC. LYDP is such an important document not only for SKs but also for the local governments overall as it contains the general framework and programs and services geared towards the development of the youth in the province, city, or municipality. We also know that this is where many SKs get their ideas for their interventions at the community level reflected in the CBYDP or Comprehensive Barangay Youth Development Plan. And that, in sum, is why SK Federation matters. It provides another vital avenue for youth participation in governance, particularly beyond the barangay level. It amplifies the voice of the youth in local government bodies where decisions about their lives and future are made.